ruckus. So, we are discussing our topic, uh, what's going on in Israel. Last week we talked about a lot of the main players of who you need to know in the background of what's going on, who Israel was, who the people of Israel are, what the land and the nation were, and what, what represents Israel as we know it. Now we're going to talk about some more key players, some that you may not know have anything to do with it. But as we look at history, you're going to see how they're involved. So go ahead and get your pen, get your pad, get your Bibles, because guess what? We're about to jump into this topic right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Stray Word, the Bible study series that gets straight into biblical topics without a lot of unnecessary fluff and or distraction. Man, we're talking about Israel in our series, and uh, we discussed, last week we discussed, you know, who Israel is as a person, being Jacob, you know, the descendants of where he came from, coming all the way back from the, prom the promise that was given to Abraham. Uh, we talked about the descendants of Jacob who were known as the Israelites. And we talked about the promised land that was granted to Israel. So the land that became known as Israel. So now we're going to talk about some more key players, some more characters to help us understand what's going on in, in the land of Israel today. The first is going back to uh, Abraham and the story of him, you know, coming over to this land that God told him to go to. Abraham didn't come alone. He had someone coming with him, which was his nephew, Lot. Uh, so we need to look at Lot and see exactly what happened with him, the story of him, and how that plays in Israel today. So let's go to the Bible and look at a verse that'll help us out with that. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 19. We're going to look there at verses 36 through 38. That is Genesis 19, verse 36 through 38. And there it reads, Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger she also bare a son and called his name Benami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So what do we have going on here? Remember, God told Abraham to take up his stuff and leave his kindred, leave everything that he had behind and go to a land that he would show him. Well, Lot came with Abram. Well, Abram at that time. Lot came with Abram. Uh, even though it wasn't really specified from God that Abram should take Lot with him. He journeyed with them anyway and, you know, they got to a point where they were birth flourishing and it came to a point where it was causing tension. They both had so many things, so, so many cattle that they had to separate ways. So Abram said it's a lot, you know, you look and see which way, you, whichever way you're going to go, I'll go the opposite way. Lot went and settled close to Sodom and Gomorrah because he saw, you know, the land was flourishing there. And Abraham, of course, went the other way. Well, what happens is we understand Sodom and Gomorrah became very evil. And we know that God said he was going to bring destruction there. Abraham pleaded with God because he knows Lot's there. And he says, you know, if you find any just people, will you spare the city? He begins to negotiate with them. Well, God sends his, his angels, his uh, messengers there to let them know that the city is going to be torn down. Lot escapes. His wife turns around and looks back at the city. She has turned into a pillar of salt. And now we are left with Lot and his two daughters who escaped the city. So here in this passage, we are looking at what happened between Lot and his two daughters as they escaped 
the city and they try to dwell in the cave. The two daughters seduce and get Lot drunk and sleep with their father so that the lineage does not die. Now we see the descendants of, of this occurrence becomes the Moabites and the Ammonites. So keep that in mind, the Moabites and the Ammonites. So what we're seeing is as God gave this promise to Abraham, there are a lot of different people who try to attach themselves to this promise or seem entitled to this promise or just have a problem with the promise that was given. And they try to interject themselves into the story. There are some people who may have been in line for the promise and moved themselves out of line and someone else came into play. And that's what we see between Jacob and Esau. So, of course, Abraham had Isaac. The, he passed the promise down to Isaac. And Isaac had Jacob and Esau, who were brothers. Esau being the eldest, which means that any uh, birthright should be passed down to him. But Jacob somehow tricks Esau out of that birthright by offering him some food when Esau comes in from hunting and, and is hungry. If you don't know this story, please read it in its entirety. It's very interesting. But what we want to look at in particular from this story is who began to join with the lineage of Esau. We see two of the rejected begin to become one people. Remember, Ishmael, who was the son of Abraham through his handmaid, also was seen as one of the rejected people who would receive a promise, but not the great promise, right? Not the promise that God had gave Abraham, not to be of the, the chosen nation. So let's see what these two peoples have to do with each other. For that, turn with me to Genesis chapter 28. There we're going to read verse number nine. Genesis 28, verse number nine. There it reads, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nahabot, to be his wife. Okay, so what do we see happening here? The lineage of Ishmael combines with the lineage of Esau. And we began to see uh, people form who were right around that same promised land, right? Now, to understand the story of the Israelites, we remember Jacob had 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes. Um, and those brothers, amongst those brothers, were Joseph. Joseph was picked on by his older brothers, sold into slavery. He travels to Egypt. And by him being in Egypt, he is able to save his family from famine. But in doing all of that, his family moves from the, the land where they are, which is known as the promised land, the land of Israel. And they move to where? Egypt, where Joseph is. So when they move to Egypt, remember, all of these other people, the Moabites, all of these uh, the Ammonites, uh, the tribe of the, the people who were the descendants of Esau, Ishmael, guess what? They're still in that same land. And we know that after uh, generations, you know, Israel is not seen as favorable in Egypt. And in Moses' generation, they make their journey back to the promised land. So now we have Israelites coming back to a land that was promised to them as a nation. And we have people already there in that land. Not only do we have the people that we discussed, the Ammonites, the, you know, the, the descendants of Esau, um, all of these people that we discussed just now. There are also other uh, people who are already in this nation. You have the Philistines, you have, you know, just different nations of people that God gives instruction to Israel when they get there of how to deal with that situation. But let's turn to scripture and see how the different people saw the nation of Israel. 
For that, let's turn to Psalms. Psalms chapter 83. Psalms chapter 83. There we're going to read verse 5 through verse 8. So that's Psalms 83 verse 5 through 8. There it reads. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarnes, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assur also is joined with them. They have hoping the children of Lot. Selah. So what is this verse talking about? This is actually talking about uh, how these different nations and different people conspire against the nation of Israel. We see contention between different nations even as Israel tries to journey back to the promised land. Certain kings don't want them to come through their city because they see how God has favor on them. When they come to the promised land, uh, you know, they see that giants are inhabiting these, these lands. They see different nations of people inhabiting the land. And God gives clear instruction to clear out certain people from the land, leaving nothing and keeping nothing. But through disobeying the instruction of God, God tells Israel, I will leave a remnant of these people here to be your test. So what do we see going on today? A remnant of people who are left in the promised land are being a test to Israel. And now we see a lot of conflict between a lot of different people groups who feel a right to the land which is known as Israel. So next week we're going to dive a little bit deeper in and understand you know where a lot of the conflict is coming from and how it began to unfold and what the scriptures tell us about that. But the lesson we can take away from the portion we talked about today is when God gives a promise sometimes we have to understand yes it is lonely to be the promise bearer. Sometimes you have to uh, take that promise as something that God has sealed for you and not some of your loved ones. Trying to take others on a journey sometimes is not going to be the best fit. Also, when God gives instruction towards the promise that he is leaving for you, follow that instruction to the T. Leave nothing undone that he says to do. Do things in the order that he says to do it and do things specifically according to the to the instruction that he gives. Don't try to change anything. Don't try to, you know, rearrange any of his instruction, because everything that you do that's not according to his instruction will affect what you gain, even though you will still have the promise because he's not going to go back on his word. It's going to affect your life and how you enjoy that promise. Well, man, I'm glad that we can really dig into this topic and see what is going on in Israel, what it has to do with uh, the news that we see today or different conflicts we may see in the land today, because this is something that we can take from the scripture and make it uh, relatable to what we see going on in our lives in this time. Well, let's say a quick prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to continue our study. We thank you for showing us uh, the history and the real true story behind what is going on in Israel, who it, who it involves, and how it is going to affect us. Uh, we thank you for allowing us to be able to read the word and get new revelation from it that is, is really uh, uh, intuitive and that we can use in today's time. Dear Father, we wanna ask that we be cleansed vessels, that we may be able to reach others and be a, a light to lead them towards you. We ask this not that we get any honor or glory, but that you get all of the honor and glory out of our lives. This we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father, it is done. All right, so like I said, next week we're going to continue this study. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper to see why things are happening in the way they are, 
how it will affect us, what it has to do with the scriptures and what the scriptures will say we will see from the different conflicts that involve Israel. But until next week, always remember, study the word for yourself so you get the straight word with no chase. <laughs>